Hey everyone, I'm Curtis. And I'm Shank. And you're listening to a very spooky episode of the Good Buds Podcast. Let's get possessed. Welcome to the Good Buds Podcast, the show where good buds smoke good buds and talk about them. This is episode 11, airing Monday, October 26, 2020, our very spooky Halloween episode. We're airing on Spotify, YouTube, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Thanks for joining us. This episode is brought to you in memory of Stephen St. Dog Thronson of Cottonmouth Kings, who passed away earlier this week. He was 44 years old and a founding member of the group. Famous for songs such as Tangerine Sky, My Garden, and many more songs about burning buds, his music will live on through his fans, family, friends, and other artists that he's worked with in the past, and it goes without saying that we'll be burning some for him in this episode. Rip bongs in peace, brother. Rip bongs in peace. So, Shank, other than this unfortunate news, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing I'm doing pretty well, man. Actually, I spent uh, the earlier part of the day working on the new podcast project that we're doing with the Good Buds Broadcast Co. called the Good Buds Ghostcast. Um, Good Buds Ghostcast. Yeah, man. I was editing that. It's uh, you know just uh, making sure that I'm doing a good job telling those spooky stories and uh, you know lots of uh, extra creepy sound effects and that kind of thing. And it's fun to do, man. It's really enjoyable oh, yeah. and. I hope other people like it as much as I do, and this not just a Halloween yep. thing. I wanna, I wanna keep going with yeah. it. By the time this episode comes out, we should have one episode out, and we'll have a yep. new episode out every Friday, so you can 100%. check that out. It's gonna be up on pretty much all the services we have right now. Plus, yeah, so yeah. go check us out. <laughs> yeah, check it out, man. Yeah, and I'll have some links down in the description for you below as well. And episode one will definitely be uh, on the air by the time that this uh, comes out for you guys, so you can get. In the spooky mood right after you listen to this by going and listening to that if you haven't caught it yet but uh how about you curtis how are you doing today man well shank i'm doing good and as with every year i like to go through my yearly tradition of going through cemeteries of famous american composers yeah that's that's pretty specific composers man that's kind of cool uh, it, it's strange but uh it was weird because this time i went to the grave of Engelbert Humperdinck. Oh, Engelbert very, Humperdinck. Yeah, very interesting guy. But hmm. anyway, so... I heard his music. Good. As I was there, I saw his grave, and I'm like, okay, this is very nice. I, you know, satisfactory. I can check this off the list. But as I'm there, I start hearing music. Were there, like, speakers anywhere? There was no speakers. It wasn't coming from my phone. And the only person around was a gravekeeper who didn't have any speakers or phone playing that I could see or anything. Weird, man. But I started listening more carefully, and it was coming from the ground from his grave. Oh, dude, this is scary as hell. That's what I thought. I'm like, wow, this is weird. But then I kept listening, and the music was playing backwards. What? Like reverse like someone hit reverse yeah. on it and it was just like, like it was on reverse it sounded like it was interesting and i'm like what's going on so i get up and i go over to the gravekeeper and i'm like dude like there's the grave over there it's playing music and it sounds like it's playing in reverse just for clarity like, for the audience engelbert humperdinck's M- engelbert humperdinck's grave yes yes so yeah. he's like is that engelbert humperdinck i'm like yeah and he's like oh he's decomposing Anyway, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you like what we're doing here, check us out on our Patreon page. We finally launched it, and you can click the link below to check out our reward tiers. Yes, you absolutely can. We have six tiers available, and we would love it if you would consider supporting the show by donating. Let's get into the review. Good Buds Review, Good Buds. So, Curtis, what are you burning today, man? Well, Shank, today I am burning on some Casper OG. Ooh. Casper, the friendly Kush. <laughs> nice. Casper is a hybrid that is indica dominant. Now the nugs on this bad boy are huge. Huge. You. Huge. Huge so, nugs. They are huge. They are potent. They are 
gorgeous. They have this nice mint green color that goes all the way around. A little bit darker than mint, but a light green. It's very foresty. It has this even coating of tangerine colored hairs that make the nug almost 50-50. Half green and half orange. Nice. And it's very nice. And that's remember this is a huge nug too so <laughs> lots yeah. of them everywhere well i think the picture you sent me earlier i believe it was on your grinder that beautiful one there like it was yes. i was man it's it's it, it he's not selling it like here guys this, sure. he's he's not lying yes. to you this, there, you'll see on the instagram it's pretty good so yeah, yeah. it's a really good pro or nug here got good tangerine hairs it's got a solid amount of crystals and uh yeah, like then. In terms of the smell, it has a nice mild piney scent to it, and it has an earthy tone to it as well, kind of like autumn leaves on the ground, you know, much like autumn. And what follows is this solid skunky punch. Uh, just think we're trademarking that for a punk band. Nobody oh, steal yeah. it. It's ours. It, nobody steal anyway. that. It's ours. Skunky Punch. Yeah. And so that Skunky Punch comes in, and all of this is followed up with this light lemony scent that lingers through it. And it's interesting because as I break the big nug open, like just a little bit, split it a bit, that lemony scent comes out really strong from the middle. Like it's kind of just locked in there a little bit. You nice. still get the skunkiness, but that lemony just kind of seeps out. But yes, like Shank was saying, the pictures of these nugs will be on our Instagram. Huge nugs that you guys definitely need to check out. But Huge. That is Casper OG. Nice. Shank, what are you gonna be smoking on for us today? Today, today I was uh, I was at the cannabis store. And I heard a song calling to me. It was this ghostly song, and I had to buy this strain. Was it a ghostly whale? It was a ghostly whale. <laughs> Why are you oh saying my. quite weird? But it was a ghostly whale, and uh, I heard it, like, right? And it was calling to me, and I, so I got this strain, and it's called Siren. <gasps> yeah, it's grown by, uh, it's grown by Anchor. Um, Anchor Organics, very important. They like That's part of their branding, is Anchor Organics. They are all organic grown. It is a hybrid. 50-50, true split. Like, pretty much that's what they say. So that's what I'm taking. Um, and uh, it is beautiful, man. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous strain. Um, it's very crystal-coated, olive green buds. I love the darker buds, so it really speaks to me. It's tightly packed with a nice, dense, and spongy feel. Like, it feels like that, you know what I mean? That nice sponginess. Yes. Squish. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's really funny because at first I thought there was no red hair on it at all. And I was like, okay, you know, it's one of those strains just doesn't have the red hair. It's kind of interesting. But I looked closer and it's just dark brown. The hair is there, but it's like so dark brown that it just kind of blends in with the olive green and just makes it look a little bit darker. It doesn't really like, it, there's no vibrancy to it. It's not one of those orange hairs that you look at it and you're like, oh my God, it's standing out and it's gorgeous, but it just mats in and it makes the buds almost look naked which is you know nothing wrong with nudity people you know your buds can be naked if your buds want to be naked right um your buds but, and your butts i mean exactly yeah whatever you want to be whatever you want just make sure you're not doing it in appropriate places just like anything uh yeah. but, uh, but as for the smell this stuff is uh subtle man it's subtle um it's got an overall tone of like sm like fresh herbs, like very fresh herbs, like you're walking through the produce department of a store and it's got that nice like herb smell. Um, right. it's, it's got like a little bit of a light citrus and a pepper sprinkled in for like a beautiful effect. It adds like a really nice like lasting power to the scent, even though it's not strong. Um, it's not nearly, right. yeah, it's not, it's not nearly as potent as other, um, you know, as like an odor as other strains that I've smoked on the podcast, but it is nice to the nose, treats the nose pretty well. Um, like I, I love it, man. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, we should try them well, out. What do you think, brother? I agree, but I have a question for you. I have an answer. Hopefully. Would you like to smoke a bowl? Yes, yes, Billy the doll. I would love to smoke a bowl. Or oh, would you prefer me? 
refer you to Jigsaw? That sounds great. Yeah. Um, it, 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 I, well, I'm Billy the Puppet, but Jigsaw, don't get those confused. Yeah. Anyway. Jigsaw speaks through. Ah, eh, whatever. Regardless, uh, I got we'll my argue bong, that, That'll be another episode. Bowl. I got, let's smoke them, brother. Let's smoke them. I got my lighter. Light them up, bros. Smoke let's them. Do it. So, Curtis, how's that treating you, my friend? Oh, spoopy, 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 bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> Love it. it's a it's a very mild smoke. Yeah, like mild amount. The uh, it's not very harsh, but I okay. So, hear me out here. Yeah, it tastes like a mixture of citrus-based cleaning products, like <laughs> pine soul or uh, like lemon pledge. pledge, lemon pledge, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, a citrus-based cleaning product, but in a good way, and an earthy umami flavor that kind of just tastes like the best way I can describe it is that fancy dirt that that one <laughs> chef tries to cook and sell for high mm. amounts of money. But it's so like we're talking like the kind of fancy dirt that dirt. two chains would have a YouTube video about. Exactly. Mm. So yeah, this is literally like citrusy pine salt and fancy dirt. Fancy dirt. I, and, it's, I, and it's amazing. I love it. That's fantastic. So yeah. Uh now the weirdest thing is it barely smells after the exhale. Like the air the smoke dissipated quickly and I can barely weed? smell anything. So this is probably a really good weed for if you're trying to like go out behind the garage, fire it up without anyone noticing. Yeah, so like self spoofing weed. It's like a subsonic exactly. round for a gun, you know? Like it's a Exactly. It, yeah. It does it for itself. So yeah. Really nice really nice all around here for some Casper OG. Uh what do you got over there, Shank, on that siren? This siren is a very smooth and subtle draw, very ethereal. Uh, you barely feel it when you're taking it in. Um, it's kind of weird. It has a strange mouth feel to it. Um, I know Curtis and myself, we both uh, vape or have vaped. Um, and uh, like basically, it's got that vape feel to it. You know what I mean? It's really weird. Like it's kind of very... like fog machines stick in your mouth a bit. Yeah, yeah, but like it's like not in a bad way at all. Like not by any stretch in a bad way, but it has a similar kind of mouth feel, and it threw me off a little bit. Um, but the exhale is where the real ki the real kick is because you get this really sweet and tart flavor profile um, that just kind of comes out of nowhere. It's almost like a mango lemon with a like a very tart peppery uh, tone on top of it um, with zero harshness whatsoever so it is definitely a very ghostly strain this strain i feel i feel like it's kind of like just floating through the ocean mists calling people to their doom on the rocks you know and it's right. fucking it's it's fantastic and i i personally love that hit i you know I, I can't wait to smoke more but i will because we need to check out some review sites don't we oh yeah so yeah, i'll tell you what i got on casper og while you take another hit by yes, the way, sir. these are opinions of stoners who have already posted online, and we are more stoners adding our opinions to the onlines. Opinions. So, Casper OG is a mellow body and mind high. It's, but continued use of it will lock you to the couch. It's good with stress relief, and it's not exactly a munchy weed, but you do get the possibility of a sweet tooth, which is something we haven't really seen before. Oh, so that's interesting. Sweet specifically tooth specifically wanting sweet tooth is interesting. Yeah, uh, hopefully and a couple candies. other couple other things that I found. It was initially created by Archive Seed Bank. It is a combination of the Doctors Face nice. Off OG and Orange Kids Ghost OG. Nice. And for any of our growers out there who are listening, it's an ideal in gr indoor grow with a nine-week grow cycle. Hmm. So pretty quick to grow and pretty good. And as you've seen, it's really good uh, produce and really good yield if you grow it correctly, it seems. Yeah, uh, judging from the size uh, of those nugs. Oh, yeah. Uh, have you found any reviews for the Siren? 
Uh, I did. It was a little bit difficult. I had to dig a bit because there it's it's a relatively new strain um, that, like I said, was grown by Anchor Organics. Um, and uh, what I did find online um, was very basic. Uh, there were no extensive reviews, but they did say that it is a low energy, uh, good chill strain. It's good for just kind of hanging out and relaxing. Um, doesn't cause any munchies as far as, uh, any of the people online have said, but it does cause a little bit of dry mouth, which is, uh, absolutely fine by me because like Curtis and m myself always say, be prepared, always have some kind of liquid nearby, um, and, uh, some kind of munchies, right? Just makes sense. Of course. Yeah. Uh, but one main thing that did make me very happy to read was that it's good for pain. So my aches are going to be like, all right. <laughs> Oh, right, all right, yeah, all right. So it's going to be fan-friggin-tastic, man. So, like, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to burning burning some more of these plants. For sure, for sure. Well, uh, oh, crap. Where's our joints, man? Oh, just, you what? what? Joint? Oh, hold on, dude, one second, one second. Uh... Oh wow! Oh, thanks, bro. Thanks, man. Thank, thank cool. you. Appreciate. I knew I knew it was a good idea to install that Ouija board. I know, right, dude? Like we should have done that ages ago. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for thanks for the joint. Uh, so you got a joint now? I got a joint now. Yep. So uh, as we always say, bros, it's four twenty somewhere. Lighters up. Let's blaze let's it. Let's blaze it. That's how long. I feel like exhaling today. Ooh. Man, that was... <laughs> Man, this tastes so much... Like, this is fantastic. Through, I gotta say, just a quick, like, mention right after... Normally, I don't do this, but this is substantially different in this joint than it is in the bong. I just need to make note of that right now. Like, the hit from this joint, when I just took that with, like, and I lit this for the first time and took a, took a hit off of it, it is substantially different smoked through a joint Ooh. than it is through the bong i think this is joint weed people um that hit gave me a much fuller effect all of the flavors that i tasted from the bong were just like exponentially like heightened you know so that this is good good note <laughs> good oh note. Um, oh man i actually gonna have to agree with you there uh man. this hit out of a joint is just incredible Literally the same flavors as before, just right there. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still personally like bongs, but this is a really good joint weed. Yeah, they, they, that's a, that's so try it if you know what that that just goes to show, folks. Like if you if you're and out there and you're trying weed and you smoke a strain through your bong or something and you don't find that you know you get the effect you like, try rolling a little joint and just take a few puffs and put, like, what I, the best advice like, I ever got when like I was we smoking said weed before. was only smoke as get... much as you want to smoke and only smoke in moderation. So if I have a joint, I'll, like, take, you know, a few puffs, put it out, you know, and just see how the weed yeah. hits me. This weed, I'm just, not... I'm burning this. <laughs> and like we said, if you don't know how to roll a joint, there's no shame in getting a rolling machine. No, It can fit most papers, most Juicy J's, most zigzags. Pretty much you know what? any paper can roll in there. Actually, you know what? I'm I'm gonna for the Instagram. I'm gonna take a glamour shot of this strain of marijuana that I have right now. I'm gonna take a picture of this siren, without any shame, next to my joint roller because I can roll a joint, no problem. If you if you hand me a paper and you hand me weed and tell me roll like roll a dupe, I'll roll one up and it'll be perfect. It'll be just fine. Burn right. the whole way through, no problem, perfect. But when you roll, like, as many joints as, you know, Curtis and I do, or, you know, anything else, it's substantially easier to just have a machine that does it for you. Um, exactly. Basically, uh, like, it's just easier to, uh, like, have a roller. You just pop the weed in there, you roll it, and it's no effort at all. It takes, like, 30 seconds. I mean, even if I don't use the roller, one of the preferred methods I use for smoking are raw cones. You literally buy cones that are in, they have a filter, they're already pre-rolled, pre-glued together. All you have to do is fill them with weed, pack them down, twist the end. 
and you have a perfect cone. Yeah. Every time, it's awesome. With a filter, it's awesome. But today I'm smoking out of a classic zigzag. I was mm-hmm. trying to find uh, which we call some candy corn flavored papers, but I couldn't find any. I know they have them by Juicy J, but I wasn't able to find any, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a, well, that's the thing. Probably this time of year, they're hard to come by. I'm sure, like, Jack right. Lantern ones would pumpkin be just spice. as hard, right? Like, pumpkin spice. Oh, my God. I'm, Can you imagine I'm how getting... fucking popular pumpkin spice rolling papers got? Well, I'm getting pump. If I can, I'm going to try to get some pumpkin spice ones for Halloween. Or I'm not, not Halloween, for uh, Thanksgiving. I'm not going to lie. Like, I people, I I personally am of the opinion that you should let people enjoy what they're enjoying as long as it doesn't hurt other people. But I also hold the opinion that the only thing that should be pumpkin spiced is pumpkin pie. <laughs> like, that's, I just can't help it. Like, I can't help it. Like, I just, I've tried pumpkin spice stuff yeah. before. It's not like I'm not one of those bandwagoners that's just like, oh, I just hate pumpkin spice because it's a basic blah, blah, blah. No, no, I don't hate it at all. I just don't enjoy it myself. People can go nuts with it. And I think they went a little bit crazy with like, you know. Yeah, they went way overboard. They went way overboard with that. it. And I, I honestly Pumpkin spice think... in and of itself, if someone gives me a cookie and they're like, it has this, this, and pumpkin spice. Okay, I'll eat it. Here's this, then this, and this. One of them has pumpkin spice. I'm probably going to eat all of them anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't... If I, wouldn't, I walk into like... a room and they have a pumpkin spice candle going, I'm not going to turn around and walk out. Yeah, pumpkin spice for me is like pop music. If it comes on the radio, I won't change the channel, but I'm not going to specifically go to a pop radio station. Right. Like, you know, if it happens to come across, like, if I'm listening to a random Spotify playlist and a pop song comes on, like, I won't be like, oh my and god, if it's change all right. it out, and, like, rush. If it's alright. If it's an alright yeah. one, if it goes with the mood I'm in. If it completely throws off the mood or whatever, then, yeah, I'll switch it. But I'm not going to make an effort to change it just because I don't want to hear it. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like, there are certain songs that'll turn off, but that's because they're bad songs. Like, you know, like, and it's, uh, it's not just like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, like, that was one of those things I am guilty of. And I will say I was on the Justin Bieber hate wagon back when it was 14 singing baby, baby, all that stuff. But to be fair, to be no, fair, I didn't. It was didn't, annoying and stuff. Well, but... I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But the reason I didn't like it wasn't because like he was a kid or because he was rich or because he was famous or anything like that. What it was is because. I felt like it was wasted talent because the producers yeah, that was... were working with him basically like they fucked him up. Like they, the yeah, adult they made Justin, him do all yeah. that stuff and like, everything the, like yeah, that. Yeah, the adult so Justin messy, Bieber we see now but... is like a burnout. Like, and it sucks because he, like, what they should have done is let him do like the kind of music that he wanted to do instead of like hyper popping him and like basically taking his talent and like turning it into a pointless endeavor, right? It's like they could literally make Ashley Simpson sound like that. So well, it's like yeah. the thing is now they've gotten or right, even though he's I won't I, well I don't know I don't know the guys so I'm not gonna comment yeah. anywhere on personality he's probably, or anything no, like he's that. probably fine but in terms of his music it's definitely matured and it's definitely gotten a lot better and there's definitely been some songs that have hit the radio where I'm like this is a really cool song everything like that and then yeah. I look it up just to figure out that it was Bieber. Yeah, and, and that's like, exactly oh, like, really? those people. And, and I always like to say, and I won't turn are, it off afterwards or hate yeah, the song. Yeah, it's there's no such like I like. I like. Yeah, I like to say that there's no such thing as like bad genres of music or bad artists or anything like that. But there are bad songs. Like there are songs out there that objectively like they're not great, but to somebody they sound good. So they're art, and that's the way that I feel about it. Because there are a lot of my songs that I've made in the past. Because like obviously, like you know this. I don't know if the audience knows yeah. it very well because I don't talk about it too much on the podcast. But I'm a very music guy, and I've been producing music for years and years and everything. And I love most of the songs that I put out. Some of them I'm never happy with, but I know that they're done, so I just put them out anyway. But a lot of them are experimental, and when other people hear them, they're like, "What the fuck is that?" Um. That's called foreshadowing, folks. You'll understand that later. Uh, but basically, they'll say, like, what the fuck is that? And it's essentially one of those things where, like, you know, like, I love it. 
and you know there are other people out there that love it but i know that other people are like so it's 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 one of those things where i don't like to say that i hate other like i don't personally enjoy other people some songs like i don't enjoy you know old town road is that what it's called right yeah old town that, okay road. yeah i don't yeah, i'm not i don't not i don't enjoy that song i'm not a fan but i'm not gonna say it's like terrible because there are people that love it you know like i can say that it's not for me and that's easy enough like that's as far as you need to go with but it. then you like, go on the youtube channel and it has over 17 million or something hits or whatever i know like and you I, can't like, say yeah. You can't say it's a bad song, like, but people because it's that. art and people love it. It's that's exactly it. Meanwhile, even if it's another a song, band you and I are very fond of is Clowncore. Oh my god, yes, fuck! That I is love a very these. You guys, amazing band. I love guys. It. You okay, love first it. and foremost, first and foremost, audience out there, um, if you You've are in, if if you are into <gasps> Clowncore, nope, nope. oh no, you don't want me to go it into the thing. It doesn't even. A... It doesn't even okay, matter. Either way, don't even just, just they're first very off, adult just themes, go watch check it. them out. You just have go watch, to watch it. Clown this. Core. We're gonna put a link to one of their songs in the description. It'll be a random choice by one of the two of us. Um or both of us. We'll we'll, we'll just put our heads together. We'll both put in our favorite songs. Yeah, we'll so, put in our favorite songs by them, yeah. And uh yeah. like what's your do you wanna say what your favorite is? Or My favorite is them? Brendan Fraser. Oh, see, see, I Brendan Fraser is kick ass, man, but I've always exactly. been a fan of That's Hell. my favorite song. And your favorite is Hell. Yes, yeah. I love both of those. This it's an amazing band. Just go check them out. You're gonna love them. Trust me. Yeah, 100%. but it's one of those bands Clowncore. that's underrated and underappreciated because not a lot of people know about it. And even but if they did it, know about it, a lot of people would be like, "What the actual fuck am I looking at? What the fuck is that?" They they wouldn't know. They would have no idea you, what it is. But when you break it down individually and figure out every single part and every single thing that they're doing, there's really fucking musically inclined yeah, that's the really strange that's the amazing thing about it is it, as an art project because it's obviously an art project by two buddies or a couple of buddies or something like that or a few people right and like but it's obviously like an art project for these guys that are really into music and it is clearly evident that regardless of whether you like the style of music or it's your taste the technicality of what they do is actually really fucking good. And like, they're it's, like very on time with each really other. really good. Oh, so good. Like, oh, by the way, if you uh, don't, if you're afraid these. of clouds and you don't even want to, you know, see the clowns because that's scary or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Just listen to it with headphones and turn away from the microphone or from the screen yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And just, just listen to the music. Yeah. You'll be confused, the visual. but. And then yeah. other times you'll just be like, oh, yeah, okay. Well, that's a cool thing about it is like the visuals add a whole like if you the amazing thing about it is that a lot of the time with art with art music shit, you end up with things that are very much not my taste. And one prime example of this is literally anything that Yoko Ono has ever done. Period. Like, and I hate it. I, I cannot stand myself. If I if someone's like, hey man, there's a music art show in town. Do you want to go? I would be like, fuck yes, would be my first impulse because I love art music, right? And like weird shit. Right. But if I was like, who's gonna play? Like who's there? Like what's going on? And they were like, it's Yoko Ono. I'd be like, sorry man, ask someone else. I'm not going. No chance. Like no, it wouldn't happen because like it's terrible. It's it's objectively and it's like or what is it? subjectively because yeah objective means it's a truth but subjective means it's my opinion right so subjectively it's terrible it just does not sound good it's literally like a whale being beaten to death by a spiky fucking club it's not pleasant to me and so that kind of art to me like it doesn't really resonate because it doesn't seem to have any composition but these guys are like almost overly composed so even if you're blind and you hear them it's like, what the hell? That's amazing. Like, what am I even listening to? It's so all over the board. It makes me feel like certain strains of weed do. I love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. love it, man. Yeah, like, Clowncore is absolutely, like, they're magnificent. And I've known about them for a couple of years now. Like, you know, like, maybe, like, two two years, three years. I think a couple of years, at least. But, you know what? Two, speaking of two years, Curtis, anyway. I think there was something we needed to cover. There is something to cover. That means there's something to cover in <clears throat> Weed News Worldwide. 
All right, so for the first news story today on Weed News Worldwide, this comes to us from 420 Intel, um, which is a fantastic site. We'll have a link down below in the description, but it's a little bit of one of my usual, <laughs> my huge kind of stories. So I'm, I'm guessing, oh, Curtis, I will give you two guesses as to what it is. You only need two. You probably don't even need one. So either a whole bunch of weed got taken at a border or a whole bunch of weed got taken from somebody's property. <laughs> You're right on the first one. Uh, hey. You got it first try. Got it first try. Uh, so, um, Buffalo. I love saying Buffalo. 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 And uh, one of my fa it's one of my favorite things. Like, you know, a lot of people, you know the sentence, Buffalo, 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 Buffalo. Yes, we all know the sentence. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. If you don't so know it, look Buffalo? it up. It's really fun. But anyway, in Buffalo, some U.S. border officers were like, hey, yo. There's a commercial shipment coming through. We better check it out. So they checked it out. So what happened was there was a commercial shipment of 20 pallets revealed that there were 2,145 vacuum-sealed packages of cannabis weighing in at 2,410 pounds. That's uh, 1,093 kilograms for those of you that like the kilogramograms. Um, mole, mole. Yeah, so the haul was estimated to have a street value estimated north of $8 million. Uh, it's being investigated. Mm. Apparently, this is this this caliber of uh, a bring-in is apparently being investigated by Homeland Security. This is apparently a national security threat. Damn. Holy shit. Um, I was about to make a joke that this is kind of like Super Troopers, but... Yeah, mm, nope. Not as funny. Kind of overshot that. Yeah, not as funny. Uh, no, but um, but it's crazy because uh, basically, um, yeah, the Buffalo field office apparently like has it covers sixteen ports of entry throughout New York State. Um, right. And uh, basically, they said that they've produced record. Yeah, they've got record-setting narcotic seizures like there in the Buffalo field office, man. Like they're like raking in the drug seizures. Um, they um oh, here it says over the last couple of months, multi million dollar cannabis seizures in Bu Buffalo have included three thousand eight hundred and thirty six pounds. That is one one thousand seven hundred and forty kilograms of cannabis. Um, yeah. so that's yeah, that's two hundred and fifty kg of buds and uh five hundred and five kilograms of weed manifested. Now check this out, dude. As office furniture. What? Yeah, bro. They straight up had office furniture oh, made like out of weed. Yeah, they had like, because yes. usually it's filled with like that corrugated cardboard that like sticks in between. So rather than that, they filled it with pot. Yeah, weed. It was all weed, man. Like they, they That's... seriously, they had weed desks, weed chairs. Uh, fucking, like, weed fucking, like, weed tables, weed fucking, like, fuck, man, I'm surprised they didn't have weed lamps, like, you know, they, like, it's wild, man, like, it's, and honestly, you know what, um, New Canon, the desk that we're sitting at in our YouTube videos that you see us sitting in front of right now, if you're watching that, it's made of weed. Yep, here, in this corner, I'm gonna break a little chip off. Yeah, look. <laughs> there you go. It's filled with weed on the inside. There you go. See? It's just weed. It's canon now. It's going to be fixed for the next episode, but... Yeah, actually, episode, actually, hold on one canon. second. One second. And... There you go, it's fixed now. Perfect. <laughs> Don't even need to wait. <laughs> but the desk is made of weed. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, that's that's amazing, man. So, like, yeah, it's fucking wild. Uh, they've been... Oh, they also got um, 2,000 pounds of weed uh, since September... Very busy July. These these guys are like on a tear just trying to... So if you're... Right now, I'm telling you, out there, first and foremost, don't be a fucking idiot and traffic weed across the border. Don't fucking do it. That is my first and foremost advice. They have it in advice. Canada. They the, have it in New York. Yeah. The first and foremost rule that I have to say, and the one thing that I have to say is, do not fucking traffic weed across borders. Just don't do it. Like, but if you do, don't go through Buffalo because those motherfuckers will get you. Like, Absolutely. man, so like, don't don't go to Buffalo. Just don't like go somewhere else. Go to like, I don't even fucking know, like drive out to B.C. and then try to cross down that way. Like, they'll probably be Vancouver. way more chill in Washington. Like, they'd be like, hey, yeah. <laughs> do it. 
It'll Whatever. go places from there. Figure it out. Yeah, well, fuck it, man. But anyway. He's nice anyway. So speaking but yeah, anyway, of, man. Yeah, that's wild. So instead of weed being, you know, seized and stuff like that, how about yeah. weed becoming legal? That's the good. Brand new, brand new adding to the list. Not a state. Rather, a whole country. Yes. Love that. This is New Zealand. New Zealand oh. is voting on legalizing recreational cannabis. There are my Kiwis. Shout Absolutely. out to the Kiwis out there. I don't know if we have any listeners in New Zealand, but I hope we do. And if we do, I love you guys. You guys are like <coughs> fantastic. <laughs> yes. Yes. But so they're, yeah, they're le- so they're legalizing it. Eh? So uh, this measure would allow people to buy up to 14 grams, approximately a half ounce per day. And it allows them to grow up to two plants per person. Um. This would put them with other countries that have legalized recreational mar- marijuana, including Canada, South mm-hmm. Africa, Uruguay, Georgia, and a number of U.S. states. Michigan being one of them. Hey-o. Yeah, yeah, boy. Shout out to your boy. Uh, that's fantastic, dude. That's I love that. Now, and yeah, the only thing that's interesting <coughs> is this one doesn't exactly have a huge pull in terms of whether or not it's going to win or lose. Like, they're really unclear. It's not like everyone is super for the uh, legalization of marijuana in New Zealand. Yeah, but, but the, the good thing is, though, is that I believe, like, I'm not certain. Like, I'm sure the the, the article probably says something, but I think there's, like, a lot of young yeah. people, though, right? Exactly. That's the main thing they're trying to do now is they're trying to urge a lot of young people from New Zealand to go out, vote, and hopefully get this... Uh, you know, uh, measure passed in New Zealand and make it legal to smoke recreational marijuana. Hell yeah, so, yeah. If you are listening and you are from New Zealand and you're legal to vote, go out and vote. Legalize marijuana for yourself, bro. It's yeah. awesome. It's also, good. Also, also, cool. um, if you if you live if you live in Australia or New Zealand, you technically get this episode a day earlier than everybody else. Yeah, so so you're gonna get to see this before everybody else does. So like, comment exactly. below before see, everybody. Else. Like, I don't know. See, Time travel. Science did weird. that. Science <laughs> did that for you guys. Science did that for you. Well, that and you know, gravity's gravity's you know making sure they don't fall out into space, right? Being on the bottom it, of the earth and everything is weird. Exactly. But no, that's fantastic. I think I I think legalization would do wonders for their country. It's done wonders for ours. It's so funny because even though. Like, you know, that's great. Like, I think it's fantastic because, like, you know, I, I hope that the young people do go out and vote for that and right. New Zealand gets legal because more countries doing it. They usually follow by Canada, though, right? Like, you know, like New Zealand and Canada are pretty I tight. I kind of do. And we both we both got the same yeah. old lady on our money, right? Like, yeah. So when, Zealand... you, when, you th- when you think that they follow a lot on the old lady... Well, no, I mean, that's the we got the queen. The queen is on both our currencies, right? So, like, uh, fucking... So, like, and the funny thing is anyway. they don't, because Britain? Nah, man. They're all like, we ain't doing that weed shit. Dab on the haters. Like, like... I know, Brit- but they're like, mainly about everyone doing ecstasy and aerosol cans. Shout well, out yeah, to the UK. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the UK. Well, that's the thing is it's legal to buy aerosol cans, right? But um, if it was legal to buy weed, I guarantee you anyway. people would be smoking weed. But anyway, um, it's like one of those things where, like, uh, you know, making it legal in New Zealand would be a fantastic boom for their economy. You know, like and like absolutely, really it would just good. help that really country out. Right. It would help that country out a lot. But yeah. um, speaking of helping countries out a lot and marijuana being legalized in countries, that leads to okay. my next beautiful story. Um, just this past seventeenth of October. Marijuana in Canada celebrated its second year of being legal. Ooh. Yeah, so two years ago, Canada became the second country in the world at the time to legalize recreational marijuana sales. Uh, Since then, they've, uh, you know, made their way to legal sale of edibles, cannabis-infused vegetables, or uh, fucking vegetables, beverages, um, and vape pens. Uh, but the newly legal cannabis market has faced a lot of share like difficulties. That's the problem, um, mainly right. because of uh, like essentially the government put a lot of restrictions 
on a lot of things, which restrictions aren't, regulations aren't necessarily bad, but with distribution and with uh, their decision to essentially not import, uh, Canada mainly, they decided, they'll, we export weed, Canada exports weed, right. um, but we don't import. Uh, with any weed that's sold in like the NSLCs and shit like that um, are domestically grown, and if you want anything else, you get, you can grow it, which is no, no big problem, or you can find somebody who can grow it, which is also not a problem, because Canadians are generous, and we give each other marijuana, because the selling it is illegal, but we can gift right. it to each other, because friends help friends out, and, you know, we trade, that's fine, perfectly legal between adults, um, and so, you know, like, you can f usually find different strains and everything else, but, um, it would be really it would have been really smart for the government to work out deals with other countries and you know specifically the united states mexico um and other european countries um and even you know like australia and stuff because there are some great marijuana producers in australia and israel um that they could have made deals with uh for importing cannabis and it would have you know it would have been a little bit more expensive at the onset but the amount of marijuana investors the amount of people willing to put money into it and invest it, it was, like, insane. So they did see some dips, some big lows. Like, it took uh, uh, basically a lot of... Uh, a lot of... Uh, the weed market went downhill. Um, actually, just a couple months ago, even. It's back on the uptick now, so it is going back up. Would have been a good time to buy a couple months ago. Um, if I had the uh, disposable income, I probably would have. Um, but, uh, basically it's on back on the uptick, but, uh, because there's been a pandemic sales boom, oddly enough, <laughs> cause right. I, I guess, when people, yeah, I guess when people are cooped up inside their fucking houses, all they, they like to be stoned. Hey, <laughs> I mean, it does make it done. I know. Right. So, um, there's been a huge sales That's really boom. Good. Yeah. Good. It's amazing, man. I love it. And. So, um, so 507 yeah. producers got granted licenses to grow weed in the last two years, um, and more are coming. They've been, uh, basically, um, month by month, it's been, sales have been raising, so it's been an overall nonstop growth, uh, but the only problem is that economists are saying they don't know exactly, I don't want to get too much into the economy and stocks of the crap, but basically economists are saying that the fact that it's going up really, really quick isn't necessarily a bad thing unless Canada adop adopts a new strategy where they kind of like um, basically start importing more and start working with other countries and stuff. And I know like it's hard during a global pandemic, but it is possible because weed is sterile anyway when it's sent, like whenever it's shipped from a factory. So like it's doable and um, like they, I think it's smart to do and hopefully it works for the future because I know that if it becomes federally illegal in the United States, trade will be a hell of a lot easier oh absolutely absolutely oh, yeah but yeah speaking of legalization in america uh there is a little bit of good news here as well <laughs> yeah so in missouri they missouri. have had missouri <laughs> missouri missouri <laughs> um so yeah. medical marijuana uh has been legal in missouri for about I believe two years now Mm -hmm. So, even though it's been approved, it's on a constitutional amendment, it's allowed, they are finally allowed to open up medical marijuana dispensaries, and the hey. first one has opened up to very long lines and very happy patients. That's magnificent. That's so great. Some people don't want to order off the internet, you know? A lot of medical patients are yeah. old. Exactly. <laughs> and it's still, you know legal for them to have the marijuana but they'd still have to get it through yeah. sketchy sources yeah they'd have to or well, have well, a that, caregiver yeah. or grow it themselves which yeah. but a lot of those you can order it off the internet legally through medical sites right. and stuff like that but at the same time like paying for that if you don't have like the right kind of insurance or whatever like it exactly. costs a lot of money and it, they could very easily just go to a fucking store down the road and buy it for and a just fair the price same, from local yeah, sources. Just the same with uh, growing it. Even mm -hmm. though you could, you'd still have to purchase the yeah. tents, the pots, the soil, the lights, and then oh, you'd have to pay an external, or you'd have to pay the lighting bill for the external stuff, get an external fan to uh, pump it out. That it's reminds a whole lot me, of stuff. Actually, that if reminds me. If you want to do it 
right just, good and have good yeah, and stuff just just as a tangent to that um i i don't have any backstory to it but there was a picture i saw on reddit where the, the caption essentially said that my mother and father um or my mother and father-in-law grew grew cannabis for the first time for us and they had a bunch of jars of weed like full of different strains of weed and they said it was like several different crops and like they explained that their uh, I think they said that their mother-in-law and their father-in-law loved gardening so they decided that because their kids they just grew it outside yeah because their yeah because their kid grew, they decided to grow it and they fucking did like uh, they they did they wanted to do an outdoor grow but the dad insisted on doing an indoor grow so they did an indoor grow and like fucking like it's crazy man it looked awesome yeah. and I was like and I was like that right there is like old people who have a green thumb and love gardening like outdoor strains are gonna be it's- bitching for them. I, exactly. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I'm just yeah. saying it is more difficult, difficult oh, and yeah. it's way Takes easier work. for them to just drive to a store and be able and to And it's not stuff. quick. It's not quick either, you know? It's not something that's going to help yeah. them now. Like, it's kind of hard to get down and plant the plants in the ground when your arthritis is fucking acting up, you know? It's better to smoke a joint and then plant the plants. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly. I think that's fantastic. So, so anyway... Up, you said happy customers, right? Yeah, so it opened up in Missouri. Uh, specifically, it opened up in Ellisville, and Manchester. There are two dispensaries that have opened up. Nice. Uh they're both run by N Bliss. Nice. Um another dispensary is expected to open Monday in Kansas City. Uh nearly two years after Missouri's vote is already approved. So yeah. Hmm. Uh another one opening soon in Kansas City. Um That's awesome, man. So Kansas City. So that, that's okay. On top of that. So yeah, yeah. on top oh, oh. of that, uh, that's in Oklahoma, right? Wait, what? Kansas, Kansas City. You said can that's Kansas, yeah. right? Kansas and uh, Kansas. And he said okay, weird. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's an oh yeah, because okay is Oklahoma. Kansas City is in Missouri. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, saying. but it's, I thought you said Kansas. Kansas is in oh, Oklahoma. Kansas City. No, Kansas is its own state. And Oklahoma is its own state. No, dude, I'm looking at it right now. Like Kansas, it's a, it's Kansas, Oklahoma. Hold on, let me Google this. Yeah, just look it up, man. Because I'm on Kansas City right now, so. Yeah, like and it's just yeah. Go look, so Kansas City, in Missouri. All right. All right. So. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. See. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oklahoma, yeah. right? Kansas, yeah, Oklahoma. Yeah. So that's okay. what, yeah. So, so yeah, it's yeah. not, man, that's oh, a weird you... shape. Oh, are you looking at the purple outline? Yeah, man, that weird purple outline. So, like, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Like a dude there? Like, yeah. it's got, like, it's got, like, the foot down on the bottom, like two weird feet, and then it goes up the yeah, back. It's really... And then it's yeah, got, like, I... a little, yeah, little thing on the side, and it's got a weird growth on the top of it, and then it goes down. Like, it's almost like the shape of a. Like one of those creatures from um, Among Us, but it looks like he's holding um, a book. Um. Okay. Uh, okay. I I was with you at first, but uh, uh, what the fuck are you on? Like it looks nothing like that. Like, what do you mean? Like what? I mean, Kansas. Like, it's right here, yeah. Kansas City. Oh, you're on Kansas City. I'm on fucking Kansas, Oklahoma. What? Can- <laughs> oh, well, oh no, you're look on at Kansas. Kansas. Yeah, look at Kansas, Oklahoma. It looks like oh. Mickey Mouse got. His face blasted off with a shaddy. <laughs> oh my god, it does look like Mickey Mouse got his face blasted off by a shawty. He even <laughs> lost an ear, man. Holy exactly. shit. That's oh, crazy. Man. Yeah, no, but now, no, no, no. Look at, look at, look yeah. at, look at yeah, Kansas City. Look, yeah. Yeah, it's under that. Yeah, it's like weird. Very nice. Weird. It's got like a growth on his head. That's weird that they have a city named Kansas in here. I mean, yeah, that is kind of weird. Like, and, and they wait, they have a city named they have a city named Lebanon in here as well. What the hell? What? Well, that's a country. Well, that it's a city in Missouri. Well, it's just What? What else There's What else city, do they have in Missouri? There's well, a city from... here called Mexico. <laughs> wait, what? Are they just straight up ripping off country names now? And next other you're gonna states? Because next you're going to tell me there's a Delaware. No, but there's a Beverly Hills. <laughs> there's yeah, also man. a Sparta. Hold on, I gotta look this up. Sparta, ne- Missouri see, places. See, 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 see
Like, I swear to God, soon, okay. soon, you're going to tell me, like, Texas, right? Here. It's got... Oh. Hold on. Looking it up. All right. What do we got? This is a bit of a tangent here. Okay. I love so, this. Missouri places that are named after other places. All right. Memphis. Alexandria. Milan. <laughs> Amazonia. Oregon. Kansas City. Denver. Paris. Florida. Louisiana. Mexico, Miami, Cleveland, Amsterdam, Warsaw, California, <laughs> what? Vienna, oh Manchester, <laughs> Normandy, Beverly Hills, Cuba, Iberia, Lebanon, oh oh Waco, Wait, Carthage. No, Waco's tech. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. It gets worse. Bakersfield. <laughs> Coney Island. Oh my god. Haiti. <laughs> Holland. What? And then they have counties. They have the county of Scotland. <laughs> the county of Oregon. Uh. The county of Mississippi. <laughs> and get this. Yeah. They have the county of Dallas. All right. And the and the county of Texas. <laughs> they do have a Texas. And specifically inside of Dallas, they have a city called Buffalo, <laughs> which is funny because that's pertaining to what we talked about earlier. Buffalo, Buffalo, and Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo. More importantly, inside of Texas, inside the county of Texas, there is a city called Houston. <laughs> oh my God, man. Okay, now. So you out. can visit Houston, Texas, Missouri. <laughs> All right, now check this out. Have you ever seen the movie Split? Uh, yes. I <laughs> love that movie. James McAvoy? Yeah, this state is James McAvoy in that movie. I, I, I think this is like the Jason Bourne. Like, Missouri just has an identity. Yeah, I know. You know it's what? got yeah, a yeah, right, no, like, yeah. Missouri just has an identity crisis. Saying. It's got a serious identity crisis going on, man. Like, what is it even? Is it even a thing? Is it? Did they just kind of like take a chunk of land and smack it down and go like, all right, guys, we got all this land and we got to name it different things so people think it's real. What should we name it? Well, Dallas sounds like a city name. Dude, there's already a city named Dallas. Well, that's all I can think of. All right, Dallas. All right. Anybody got anything else? Houston. Seriously, man. Are you from Texas? Yeah. Are you from like... Can we just name this whole area Texas? <laughs> can we I'm name this, this whole, whole area, area Texas? Dallas No, then. you know what? I... You know what? I'm naming this part Houston. I'm naming this part Dallas. And we'll name this part Texas. And inside of Texas, we'll have a place called Houston. <laughs> like, fucking... Well, I'm from California. Well, you can go up north, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I'm from... I'm from Mississippi. <laughs> or I'm from Milwaukee. Well, you can go... Well, you can go to the Mississippi then, you son yeah. of a bitch. Yeah. I'm from Cuba, man. Oh yeah, no, no worries, bro. Well, well, Cuba. Okay, Cuba. They kept Cuba close. <laughs> it's funny. Cuba's actually relatively close by to Houston and Texas, so they keep well, to them for cheap work. Well, you know they do love cig- they do love them cigars. I mean, ooh, was that bad? Anyways, <laughs> no, nah, that's fine. Cigar. They like the cigars, man. But uh, like, yeah. You know, so but anyway, yeah, no, Missouri getting medical marijuana. More legalized dispensaries are opening up. Uh, 192 are coming eventually. Woo. So. They have, apparently, in Jackson County alone, they have over 7,000 patients, so it's going to be really good to get all these new dispensaries in there. Uh, yeah, get these people some It's going to be really good for their economy, and nice little bump for Missouri. Uh, and, by the way, this news article comes courtesy of Leafly. Yes, yes, check it out in the description below. That's absolutely, and I think that's great, man. That's like, I just love when, uh, you know, more access for patients that need it, um, like, you know, people that truly um, benefit from it. I just Absolutely. think it's a, it's really great for them to be able to just have easy access to it, man. Sure, for sure. Yeah, so, uh, like, I don't know uh, how much time we have left, Curtis. What are we looking like, brother? Uh, yeah, it's looking like we're getting pretty short on time, but I think we got time to say, Tank, how are you feeling? Man, I am... Feeling fantastic. The strain is definitely a little bit more laid back. Um, I can definitely tell it is like kind of like a very true neutral. I feel laid back but chatty at the same time. Um, but uh, it's it's good, man. It's a nice. It's very a uh, little bit of a heavy kind of stone, like very weighty. 
Um, I don't feel floaty from it, but I do enjoy it. Um, not necessarily what I would call couch locks, but I feel relaxed and it's, it's very enjoyable. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, man, so far so good. How about you? How's yours treating you? Well, it started with a nice, mild, mellow, you know, as the description said, very good, chill weed. Um, and then I, I've, uh, settled back a little bit more and it's... It's relaxing. Very nice. I'm I'm definitely ghosting here. Nice. That's fantastic, man. I love that. That's so good, man. I'm glad that that strain treats you well. Like and like like we said, these are our opinions. You can try you can try these strains out yourself and let us know in the comments below or wherever you see this video. We'd love to hear from you guys to like, you know, let us know how you feel. Um yeah. and uh, you know, like just uh, hit us up for anything, you know, just Say hi, fucking, you know, just exactly. whatever you comment, want to do, man. Like, comment, yeah. subscribe, do whatever you want. We'll notice. We like it everybody. Yeah, we, We're yeah, always we available on social media, so yeah, let us know. Subscribe, like our photos, message us. You know what we're about. But uh, before we s go, Jenk, do you got anything else rolled or packed? I do indeed, my I friend. I have another doobie doob rolled right here for the road, and I think that, uh... Got yeah, a we... long pack right here that needs to be finished off, so... Sweet. Light is out, bro. Toast Light smoke up. real quick. Yes, sir. Ooh. This is a very good strain, guys. Check it out if you get a chance. It's a... Oh, yeah. Tasty. Casper the Friendly Ghost, Casper OG, and yeah. the Siren. Siren, grown by Anchor Organic. Absolutely both, magnificent. Both beautiful strains, but we're running out of time here, bros, so let's roll one for the roads, and uh, we will catch you in the next episode. That's right. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and... Uh, be as spooky as you can possibly be during this beautiful, beautiful Halloween season. Later, buds. Don't let... Later.